Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. I hope you have already watched my first video in, on medical genetics which discussed the basics and the tools and the gadgets which are required to solve any question if it comes in the examination regarding medical genetic pedigree analysis. I'm giving the link of the video in the description channel here. Please watch the video and subscribe to the channel. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss autosomal dominant disorders. Now, autosomal dominant disorders Again, I want to remind you that whenever we discuss any genetic disorder, what are the things that should be in our head? And if you master those things, you will be uh, at the top of this world because you will not miss a question, okay? So what do we expect in pedigree analysis? The first thing, identify the mode of inheritance. So in today's lecture, I will tell you how can you identify if it is autosomal dominant disorders just by looking at the pedigree, okay? So that's the first goal of today's lecture. The second thing is, what is the recurrence risk? And I will tell you how to calculate the risk, recurrence risk. In previous lecture, I told you it's the Punnett square that we will use, okay? And the third thing in the pedigree analysis is always identify if somebody's carrier. Now, whenever we are talking about autosomal dominant disorders, there is no carrier state. So there is no carrier state. Why? I will tell you when we move ahead in the lecture, basically in autosomal dominant disorders, you need only one diseased allele to be present in a person and the disease expresses itself. Therefore, there is no carrier state. Carrier state is usually the phenomena of recessive disorders, okay? We are talking dominant disorders, so you can just cross it that in dominant disorders, we don't see carrier status, okay? Now, so we are left with two things basically. In this lecture, we must understand that by looking at the pedigree, how can you tell if it is autosomal dominant? And the second thing is, what are the recurrence risk of disease happenings, disease appearances in the offsprings when we are dealing with autosomal dominant disorders? Okay, so let's begin with the first problem. The first problem is identify the mode of inheritance. Let us now discuss how to investigate the mode of inheritance just by looking at the pedigree, okay? So, uh, just by looking at the pedigree itself, you should be able to tell if it is autosomal dominant disease or some other form of genetic disorder, okay? How can we do that? Let's go through this. Uh, you, should be, you should be appreciating all the symbols presented here. You know, whenever it's a square, it's a male. Whenever it's a circle, it's a female. If it's black in color, it's diseased. We discussed this all in the previous lecture, okay? Now, first thing, what is your observation? Do you see any skip generation in the pedigree? When I say skip generation, that means, do you see any generation where disease is not present? Have a look at the pedigree. There is no such generation, which means the disease is passing on onto every single generation. Look at the male and female at the top the head of the family, the male is diseased and the female is normal and they get three children. The three children are one son and two daughters. Out of these three, son is diseased, one daughter is diseased, black in color, and one daughter is normal. So they pass on to the disease into the next generation. Now from that next generation, two of their offsprings are married. Diseased male is married to a normal female, if you see there, and the normal female is married, normal daughter is married to a normal male. And when the diseased male is, is married, he passes on to the disease into the next generation. So basically, you see disease in every generation. And that is one of the major characteristics to identify if it is autosomal dominant disorder, okay? So whenever you see such a condition in your genetic pedigree that the disease is passing on, you see disease in every single generation, so it is going down vertically, you see and identify this as autosomal dominant disorder. So the first characteristic is it appears in every generation. There is no skip generation. And the second characteristic is it has a vertical appearance. What I mean by vertical appearance is that it passes on and on and on and on to the next generation. So it goes down vertically, okay? If you see these two characteristics in any of the genetic pedigree, you mark it, you label it as autosomal dominant disorder with full confidence, okay? So that is the trick to identify autosomal dominant disorder. I told you, for autosomal dominant disorders, you have to worry about two things. Identify the mode of inheritance and identify the recurrence risk. There is no carrier status, and I will tell you why, okay? So we have dealt with the mode of inheritance. It should be very clear. If it's not clear, please stop the video, rewind the video, watch it again, okay? Now, 
you mark it as orthosomal dominant. Now let's discuss about the recurrence risk. Now before we proceed to discuss recurrence risk calculation, I want to focus you on this important fact that there are some Punnett Square rules for each and every disorder that we discuss. Now, therefore, whenever I deliver a lecture on whatever genetic disorder, I will be telling you first the Punnett Square rules so that you know the rules and you can apply and identify the recurrence risk, okay? So, Punnett Square rules for autosomal disorders are these. You know, this is a Punnett Square, two by two box, and at the top is always a male. On the left-hand side is always the female. That is the rule we discussed in video number one, okay? Now, if I write capital A and small a at the top, that means this is the genotype of a male. And a small a and a small a on the left, that means this is the genotype of a female. Now, here is the very important catch. Capital A in autosomal dominant disorders is a mutant representation. It's a disease representation. So the capital A or capital or capital whatever alphabet depends upon how they're presenting to you in the examination. A capital alphabet would mean diseased condition. And a small alphabet would mean a normal condition. Okay? And this is very important for all the interpretation and analysis that we do, okay? Now, you must understand that capital alphabet is the disease condition, it's the mutant, and a small alphabet is normal, okay? All your interpretation will be based on this basic principle. Always remember that for autosomal dominant disorders, capital is a disease condition and a small is a normal condition, okay? And see this very important line coming up here. Only one mutant is enough to get a person diseased. So, for example, if in this Punnett box I tell you that a capital A and a small a is the genotype of the male, what do you think? The male will be diseased or normal? It will be diseased because it has a capital alphabet in there. And because it has a capital alphabet, one is enough. And that one capital alphabet will cause the disease, okay? And what do you think about the female? The female is normal because both the alleles are normal for this female, okay? Now, let's see. If this male, if the chances are that the capital A uh, of the male combines with a small a of this female, it leads to development of a genotype which is capital A and a small a. What do you think? This person, regardless of the gender being a male or a female, this person harboring this cross, this genotype, will it be diseased or normal? It will be diseased because it contains one mutant allele okay so that's a disease so this is how you interpret the chances and let's see for the other boxes this box again this is a disease offspring because it has a capital a from the male and a small a from the female and this will be normal because it has from the father a small a and from the mother a small a and this will be normal as well so if you look at the offspring the punnett square the four options that we have got two of them these two will be what normal or diseased they will be normal because they contain a small, okay, a small ladders. And what do you think about these ones? These ones, the one highlighted in red, they will be diseased or normal? They will be diseased because they contain one mutant allele. So let me repeat that one more time because this is worth repeating. There are rules for interpreting Punnett Square for each genetic disorder. For autosomal dominant disorder, the basic rule is that capital A is diseased and small a is normal, okay? Now, based on this, what, what do you think uh, will be the recurrence risk calculations, okay? If you understand this, let us move on to how to calculate the recurrence risk. Now, this is the pedigree in front of you now. And this is the pedigree we will ask some questions from you. What do you think? This is autosomal dominant or some other type? You should be able to tell me this is autosomal dominant. Why? Because disease is appearing in all the generations. There is no skip generation and disease is moving vertically downwards. Okay, so that you know for sure. Now, the second question is, what is the recurrence? Let's see and investigate this couple. This is the couple where the male is diseased and the female is normal. Again, if you don't understand the symbols, watch my video number one, where I have described all the symbols and the color schemes, okay? So we are now investigating this particular couple highlighted in red. The male is diseased and the female is normal, okay? And I'm now telling you that the genotype of the male is capital A, small a, and you know that the Punnett square rule for autosomal dominant disorder is that whenever there is a capital letter, it's disease status, okay? And the female, because she is normal, she will be small a and small a. Because if it was capital A, she would have been diseased. 
Remember that you need only one mutant for autosomal dominant disorder to get the disease expressed. Okay, so these are the genotypes of the couple that we are investigating. Let's draw a Punnett square. On the top is the male, and you know the genotype of the male is capital A and small a. On the left is the female, is small a and is small a, and you make the crosses. You make the crosses. You make the crosses, and you fill the Punnett box. Now, once the Punnett box is filled. These are diseased, you know this, and these are normal, you know this. What do you think? A recurrence risk of 50%. See guys, this is very easy to solve only if you know what are the rules of the Punnett Esquire for interpretation for autosomal dominant disorders, okay? Then you can do it like, like a piece of a cake. This is very easy for you. Only if you know the basics. So please watch my video number one. Please watch each and every video to understand the whole spectrum of medical genetics, okay? Now, at the end, I must focus on telling you there is a long list of autosomal dominant disorders. There is a long list of autosomal recessive disorders and nobody expects you to learn them all. But I will give you five to six diseases in each category of genetic disorders which are worth remembering. You should not waste your time in the examination to think about those. These you should learn by heart. So whenever they talk about autosomal dominant disorder, these diseases should be in your head. You should remember these, okay? Familial hypercholesterolemia is the LDL receptor deficiency. It's, it's one of the very common um, underrated uh, autosomal dominant disorder. Huntington disease uh, reminds me also of the Huntington Beach in California. I visited there recently. And anyways, Huntington disease is an autosomal dominant neurofibromatosis type 1, Marfan syndrome and porphyria, acute intermittent. So I would recommend that you should remember these by heart that these are autosomal dominant disorder. There are some recessive disorders which you must remember, some excellent dominant and recessive because they're very commonly asked in examination. Let me recapitulate the whole lecture one more time. What are we discussing? We are discussing autosomal dominant disorders. What are our expectations from autosomal dominant disorders lecture? Number one, we should be able to identify just by looking at the pedigree if this is autosomal. Number two, we should be able to calculate the recurrence risk using the Punnett Esquire. There is no carrier status. Why? Because even if one mutant allele is present, it will express the disease. So there is no carrier status, okay? For carrier status, you, we're talking about recessive diseases, recessive disorders. This one is dominant. One mutant allele is present, the disease expresses itself, okay? So how did we learn that, how can we interpret if it is autosomal dominant just by looking at the pedigree? Two things. The first thing was, if it is going on into every generation, this is autosomal dominant. If it's going vertically without any skip generation, this is autosomal dominant. And how did we proceed with the calculation of recurrence risk? Remember, there are rules for Punnett Square interpretation for each. And this is very important. I am emphasizing this again and again because this is important. The same interpretation does not apply on autosomal recessive or x or sub. This is purely for autosomal dominant that a capital allele means disease status. And a small letter, a small allele means a normal status, okay? So with this, I hope you liked the video, you understood the concept. If you did not, please go back. And this is all you need to know about autosomal dominant disorders. You know how to identify this is autosomal dominant. You know how to calculate the recurrence risk. And now you should be good for solving all the questions that appear in your USMLE, your MRCP, or whatever examinations, okay? So all the very best. Watch the video if you do not understand in the first place. Watch it again and again and again. Share with your friends. Subscribe the channel to show your support and appreciation. And I will see you soon with another video. Thank you very much.